Kevin McNulty here. It's great to be with you again. And we're sharing on this very, very important subject of health, healing, God's touch. Thank God for doctors and nurses and hospitals and all those that are trying to help people. But you know, there is a divine touch. There is a divine healing. There is an answer to prayer. And this is what my wife and I, for over 30 years and over 50 nations, have been proclaiming on the great fields of the world to so sometimes over a million people a year for all these years. And we appreciate you now tuning in so that you can receive this divine touch, this life seed of God, this power from on high that will transform you. Now, if you're sick today, I especially want you to listen in, to relax, get, put your mind at peace, and listen to the message that is going to bring healing to you. I'm writing a book right now called If I Were Sick, and uh, I'm writing it for people like yourselves who might find yourself in a sickness or in a compromised position or in a debilitating uh, physical condition where you're regressing and you're losing the vitality, you're losing the movement, you're losing your abilities. I've got good news for you that God renews our youth like an eagle. Every few years, an eagle's beak will be knocked off and a new beak grows out. An eagle's wings will fall off and new wings will grow. And so it is with us that we can be renewed. Even in our old age, we can be renewed. So uh, don't ever don't ever just surrender to circumstances or surrender to age or surrender to ailments because God's got a miracle. He's got a healing for you. So out of this book, If I Were Sick, I want to talk to you. Some of the questions that we need to answer uh, will directly affect your results. Here are the questions. One, does God want to get involved in today's problems? A lot of people think that he's not, he doesn't. He just is waiting for you to die, and then he'll take care of you in the afterlife. Question number two, who qualifies to be healed? A lot of people feel that they just don't qualify. They're not holy enough. They're not smart enough. They're not uh, sanctified. They're not uh, uh, whatever. Question number three, how does healing come? Is it difficult? Question number four, does Christianity need healing proof of God's presence today? Maybe we don't. Maybe maybe the church is just going along fine without any miracles, without any evidence that Jesus is alive. But I think that we need the evidence. Those are the questions that we want to answer today, right now. I believe this, that God is not only just interested in healing your ailment, but that God is interested in making you whole, completely whole and healthy. And that, that's what I want to start with. That one, he's interested in making you whole. Two, healing is for all. Three, healing comes through words. And four, healing is the proof of the resurrected Jesus. When the Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, he said this. He, uh, and, and let me just read that right out of the scripture. He said, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there we have it, that God, through the Spirit, was identifying that Healing is not just for one area, but it has to do with our mental state, it has to do with our emotional state, and also with our physical state. Matter of fact, if you were to ask the doctors at the major universities in the United States, Mayo Clinic and John Hopkins, they would tell you, and they have written very clearly, that over 80% of the illness in the hospital is not due to a direct physical problem, but it is due to a mental problem. Well, that's a shocking statement to make from these doctors who we consider to be well-educated and understanding the functions of the body. But yet, as you dig into this, you begin to understand that God has got a perspective that we need to understand that will touch our mind as well as our emotions 
and therefore see healing penetrate our physical body. Do you know that there are hormones that you're, and chemicals that are released off of your brain every day? I understand there's over 250. Now, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, so it's not, that might be a little off, but 250 chemicals that our mind is releasing. Can you imagine if you are in worry or if you're in fear or if you're in anger or if you're in strife, the kind of chemicals that your body might be be receiving and that your mind might be releasing? Could it be that these things that we talk about in the spirit, these problems that people have that are spiritual, that they are affecting their physical bodies? I really believe that's true. I believe that, that it could be a very strong source of arthritis, heart disease, cancer, and all the things that plague society today. So if God can physically touch our mind as well as our body, we will live a long life. It says, with long life, will I satisfy you and show you my salvation? Well, how many here want a long life? That's why I'm speaking to you today, that you will experience this life, the life that God intended, to remove the hurt from your emotions, to remove the hurt from your mind, and to remove the physical pain that you're experiencing. So these questions are very important. What brings healing? Words, what brings healing? Uh, words is what Jesus used to bring healing. And we have to ask ourselves, can Jesus be the same in his word today that he was in his flesh 2,000 years ago? Jesus used his voice to speak to even the dead, and they rose from the dead. Lazarus rose from the dead on three words, Lazarus, come forth. How did that happen? Well, that's a wonder, isn't it? That's a mystery. But if, if, if words can raise a dead body, surely they can heal a sick body. Isn't that true? It says here in the story of Jesus, it says that as he was teaching, the power of God was present to heal. As he was teaching, the power of God was present to heal. Even now, as I am speaking God's word, his presence is here to heal you. His power is available to change you, to lift you, to straighten out those chemical releases in your mind, to bring peace to those emotions that get you off into tangents, and to bring pain-free living to your physical ailments. Hallelujah. What makes Christianity different than religion? A lot of religions are vying for people's attention today. They have all sorts of good moral codes. They have good disciplines. They have uh, teachers uh, of all so varieties. But what makes Christianity different than religion? It's very important that you understand this, is that when Christ and his word comes into a human being, there is a cell, a germ cell, a life cell. Inside of a cell, there is a germ, and that germ is the life force of that cell. Scientists can make the cell, but they cannot make the germ that's in the cell that gives the cell life. Scientists can make a seed, but they cannot put the life in the seed that will produce a plant. So <laughs> God has put this life force inside of his Word, the Bible says that his word is seed. And when we hear that seed, that life force gets in and transforms us, and that becomes a miracle. That's where life begins. We were just in the Congo, and there was uh, one gentleman there. He was going to kill. He had had poison with him. He was walking by the, the uh, outdoor prayer event, and he was going to kill his family because he could not afford to feed them. And he was of an old cultural religion that did not have answers for him. So on his way home to kill his family, he overheard this foreign voice speaking. He decided to stop and listen. And God got his attention. And then Jesus revealed himself to that man. And he wept as he came to the uh, up on the platform and wept, saying, here's the poison. I was going to kill my family tonight and then take my own life, but I have met Jesus, my Savior, 
And his family, he didn't know it. His family was in the audience. And so they were waving and screaming. There were over 110,000 people in that audience that night. So they're waving out there and the people start saying, his family's here. So we brought the family up on the platform. There was a beautiful reunion and all of them were transformed. Jesus got a hold of the whole family. You know, that's what God wants to do. He wants to put the seed of life into you today and transform you, give you a new perspective of him, a new perspective of your body, a new perspective of his promise, a new perspective of your destiny, your provision. And when when that seed gets into you, you get a new view on life. Life begins again. I tell you, you wake up and you say, there's plenty to do. There's nothing boring about life when you walk it with God. Amen? We need to understand these things. We have to go back to these questions. Who's who qual, who's qualified to be healed? Who's qualified? Let me tell you this, because a lot of people disqualify themselves. I want you to know that you are qualified to be healed if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, those who 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 uh, the healing was provided, but it had certain provisions. For those who were in the, the children of God in, in Egypt, healing was provided, and three million of them, the Bible says in Psalms 135, three million of them walked out of the desert without one infirmity, without one feeble grandmother. No one on a cane. Can you imagine all those old people who had been working hard, making brick for the Egyptians? Oh, how their bodies must have been bent and twisted through that hard brick making. And yet the Bible says not one feeble one left. In other words, supernatural restoration must have come. That And how did that restoration come? It came because they Moses told them to eat this lamb and put this blood over their lentil post. Well, the blood was to cover what? The sin. But the lamb, the eating the lamb, was to cover their health. And all who did that, they were made whole and walked across the desert. Oh, we see case after case in the Old Testament of how people received healing. But what about in the New Testament? We see in the Old Testament where they were, because of their sin, they were bitten by snakes in the camp. And God told Moses to tell everybody to, if they will look upon the pole with the snake, they shall be whole. So healing came through looking. Well, that was just a shadow of the way that God was going to heal today. And I want to share with you in a few moments, how God is healing today. We are to look. And I tell you what, when we look and what we see will bring healing to our life. Who's qualified to be made whole? Well, we see where he healed them all who came out of Egypt. We see that he healed them all who looked upon, in the Old Testament, who looked upon the snake on a pole. But here in this new world, in our day and age, who qualifies? Can God, it put it this way, we have now the ability to look upon God's provision of Jesus Christ. And when we look upon that provision, a miracle begins. We receive all that Jesus gave to us. You know, when I was born of God, I didn't understand that. I had a knowing come into my life, but it was a knowing that my past was forgiven. It was a knowing that I was clean. It was a knowing that I was going to heaven. It was a knowing that God was with me. But I did not know some of these things concerning sickness, concerning disease, concerning poverty, concerning the curse, concerning the devil, concerning the situation that I was in. I understood what happened internally. I understood where I was going, and I understood where I've been. But over the years, I have learned and discovered and practiced with the peoples of the world these truths that set people free, these truths that make people whole. So I want you to tune in. I want you to receive. I want that God has a miracle for you today. God wants to heal you. And and I titled this message, If I Were Sick. If I were sick, I'd be tuning in. I'd be listening. I would be believing. I would be receiving. Because listen, if God can save one, can't he save five? If God can save five, can't he save 50? If God can save 50, can't he save 500? If God can save 500, can't he save 5,000? If God can save 5,000, can't he save everyone 
who hears and receives and responds. You see, everyone who is listening to the voice of the Word of God today can receive. If you can believe these words, you can receive what these words say, that you will be saved, you will be healed, you will be delivered. We believe that that, that if God could do it for one, he could do it for five in the area of salvation. Do we believe that in the area of healing, if God could heal one, he could heal five? If he could heal five, he could heal 50? If he could heal 50, he could heal 500? We believe that. Well, if he can do it for one, he can do it for 500. If he can do it for 500, he can do it for what? For all. So the point is this. Who qualifies to be healed? All qualify to be healed. Let me read to you. And I believe that if we are to look at Jesus, then we have to agree that he is the example. He is the model. What he did is what we are to do. What he gave us to do is to model him, to do what he did, to be like him in the earth. Well, this is what it says. Jesus went about all of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all, all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. All kinds of sickness. You might think, well, my sickness is too difficult. I've had this sickness too long. Or the, 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 this virus, maybe I've got AIDS. There is no cure for AIDS. You might be thinking that because society tells you that. You know, there are so many uh, sexually transmitted diseases today. There are no cures for them. But, you know, we, we can't be too uh, uh, ex- ex- exalt medicine too highly because they still haven't cured the common cold yet. So <laughs> we're going to need to look to God for these solutions. But Jesus says that he healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Well, that's good news. I remember standing in front of an audience of thousands there of of a of a old cultural religion, and uh, they had never heard this message. They had no way of believing on Jesus. They had never heard of him for over thousands of years. They have never been exposed to this message. Well, that night I said to them, "Listen, if Jesus will demonstrate to you that he's alive, he's not another dead prophet." He's not another dead teacher. He's just not another uh, speaker of a histori- of a spiritual leader of history, but he is a person risen from the dead and alive. And demonstrate to your satisfaction that he's alive. Then will you believe on him as your Lord and Savior? And 3,000 of them raised their hand and said, yes. Well, then I just had them simply pray a prayer. Matter of fact, I read the prayer out of the book. And when they did, God answered that prayer and over 23 of them were instantly healed of deafness. Amazing stories started to come out of that meeting. Matter of fact, well, the third testimony that came out was a woman who had fallen into the river when she was a young child, and the, because of the infection in her ear, they had removed her eardrum and put a hole in the side of her head. And uh, she was there, and she flipped back her ear and showed the hole, and <laughs> it was amazing that she was healing, hearing perfectly again. This is a miracle. It's a, it's a mystery. It's a truth that is beyond normal thinking, but yet it's scriptural. It's, it's our thinking. It's the thinking of those who know this creator and the one who loves us, the one who sent his son to die for us. We got to remember that this is the gospel. This is not something strange. This is not something unusual, but God has been wanting this message to help hurting people all throughout the ages, he's now it's come to you today in your place where you're hurting. So, how can we be healed? We have to do what they did. We have to say what they said. We have to receive what they received. We have to act like they act. We have to declare what they declare. And then we experience and we see, and we, we, we actually see the results of that. That's our faith in action. What brings them healing? We fill our words with faith. And we say, I am the healed. I am alive because he's alive. I am healthy because he took my sickness. I am free from the curse because he took my curse. I am delivered from the powers of darkness because he became in bondage and he went to hell for me so that I could be set free. What he did on the cross is what was done not for himself, but he did it for me. And when we receive that, when we believe that, when we know that, then we act like it, and then we talk like it, then the miracle power of the cross begins to work 
in us. Wow. You see, governments can change. Economies can change. Even religions can change. But Jesus never changes. God never changes. The disciples or the followers of Jesus Christ never change. The message of the gospel never changes. So when these things which are stable are secure, when they are always with us, we can rest assured that they are working. This word is working in us. Say that even as you're listening. The word is working in me right now. There was a, uh, there was a man in the city. It was at a Lake Issachar in the country of Kyrgyzstan. And uh, on that lake, there was a small town. We went there to, to preach a message just one afternoon. And it was a very rough day. The winds were blowing. Matter of fact, the winds were blowing so strong that as we set up, this older woman who was trying to listen, the wind actually picked her up and took her about 20 feet. And I thought, what am I doing out here speaking in this strong wind with this crowd of people? They were willing to listen, but I was shocked that anybody could hear anything. Well, we finished. We, uh, we, we prayed for them and we went back to Almaty. And, uh, two years later, we returned back to that country and there was this old Asian looking man with a dark leathery skin. And, uh, he came up to me. And his whole family was with him. And he said, I just wanted to meet you and thank you for what you did. And I said, sir, have I ever met you? He said, yes, you have. I said, I don't recall ever meeting you. Where? He said, Lake Issachar two years ago. I was of an ancient religion. And I was in that city. And I was standing in that street when you were speaking. And the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to me as you were speaking. And I have a revelation that he is alive, a revelation that he is the healer and the savior. So I took that revelation that's precious to me, and I went back to my house, and I started preaching out of the book that you gave us, the Bible. And so I've started a church now in Lake Issachar. We are the first church of Lake Issachar. And I thought, isn't it amazing? Here I thought nothing happened that day, but that seed of the word of God got into that person. There's life in the gospel. There's life that will change your life, life that will open your eyes, life that will heal your body. And it's a life germ that gets into you and says the spirit of God enters into a man and says that, behold, all things become new Old things are passed away. All things become new. You get a new start, a new perspective, a new hope, because God is now in you. The mystery of the gospel is this, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do we need proof? Do we need proof? Did Paul need proof that Jesus was alive? Yes. Did Jesus need proof? Yes, Jesus said, if you don't believe me because of my words, believe me for the work's sake. In other words, <laughs> go ahead and just look at what I'm doing. Who can do this unless God was with them? The wise uh, leader of the time, Nicodemus, he said, he said to Jesus, your miracles make proof that God is with you. So these miracles, they haven't passed away. They are demonstrating and proving that the messengers of God are of God. They are demonstrating that this Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That God is still interested in healing you emotionally, mentally, and physically. And that this redemptive healing is for all. Wow. You may say, well, I don't deserve it. You know, there was a tax man in the uh, country of, of, uh, of, uh, in the country of Kyrgyzstan, in the city of Bishkek. And he came on one of the meetings. He was a bad man, a wife beater, an alcoholic. And he was a thief. And he came to the meeting, but he was dying of a kidney disease. He was wearing a kidney belt. And as he sat and listened, he was not coming because he wanted to listen. He was coming because his wife had snuck into the meeting. 
And, but God got a hold of his life and healed him. He wept and wept and wept. Then God restored him financially to some things that had happened in his life financially. Then God uh, restored and revealed Jesus to him. A total makeover. This man, he didn't deserve it. He was a wife beater. He was cruel to people. He was a thief. He was he was hard, communist type of person. But God reached in and changed his life. God can reach in and change your life right now. He wants you to. I want you to open up your heart right now. I want you to say, I believe this good news. This good news is for me. God, I thank you for sending Jesus that I'm sick today and I need a healer. I thank you. You would do for me what you did for that tax man. Just stretch out your hand and say that. Say, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that I qualify for healing. I thank you, Lord, to touch me emotionally. Touch my 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 mind so that I do not have the fears and the anxieties. Touch my body. Remove the pain. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I invite you to come in and do a miracle in my life. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name.